It was late at night, the quietest time at the hotel. On the radio next to you, play gentle jazz from Alistair's radio tower. You had showed him how to set up playlists so that his radio show could go on 24-7, even when he wasn't present. He absolutely adored it. You had trouble sleeping, and so you had decided to read a book, something you haven't done in a very long time. You used your own flames to drown the area around you in a gentle blue light. While you had your head gently held in place by your thighs. You were Dolahan Demon, a somewhat uncommon race of male and female sinner born. Like the Dolahan spirit of legends, your heads were easily taken off of your necks, painlessly too. Out of your neck stumps burned an eternal flame, its color representing the flavor of your souls. Because of the beautiful light, Dullahan souls were very desired by dealmakers, some collecting various colors like Pokemon cards. Even Alistair had tried, but especially since the specific color you had was blue, a relatively rare flame color in the Pride Lair. Your body, hair, skin, eyes, fingernails, even the inside of your mouth were entirely ghostly whites and grey tones. Your eyes turning blue whenever you put your head back on. You are dressed in a black, armless shirt with comfy grey sweatpants. Your naked feet tapping onto the sofa cushions as you read. On the bar somewhere behind you, you heard the quiet, rhythmic snoring of Husker, the barman. Poor cat had drank himself into a coma. The book you were reading was the thrilling story of a house cat who joined a tribe of feral forest cats. A quite entertaining read, actually. Just as you yawned, however, the door to the lobby was kicked open. You shook, dropping your head on the floor out of fright. Shit, shit! You mumbled into a wood. Your face was pressed against the leg of the lobby's coffee tail. You hated operating your body blindly. Hey, little help here! You shouted, hoping the new arrival would help you. Blindly, you began feeling with your body into nothingness. You were already used to seeing your own body in third person, but doing this blind was just unfair. You heard footsteps behind you, and moments later, a hand grabbed you by the hair. Ow! You complained. You were picked up by someone, turned around in their palm. Oh, hey Angel! You mused. But their spider demon looked at you with a deadpan. He took your head over to the bar, making you wonder what he was planning. He sat down on one of the stools, one hand under his chin. I don't think we should wake up Husk, he said. I know, I know, it's just bad timing is all. You opened your mouth rapidly to use your chin to turn your face to him. So, why did you put me here instead of returning my head to my body? That made me swallow way, way too much today. That guy. A cyclops demon. A big one. He just wouldn't stop, you know. Angel noticed your grossed out expression. So you know what I mean. I don't have to say it. He paused, reaching behind the bar, grabbing a random bottle. Popping the cork, he drank straight from it. Can I have some too? Angel rolled his eyes. Get your O. He stopped, realizing you didn't have hands right now. Fine, here. Reluctantly, he put the bottle to your lips. With a smile, you drank a few gulps. The stuff burned. 
You didn't quite know the logistics of it, but even when your head wasn't attached to your body, it still went down your throat and into your actual body, like there was a tiny portal connecting your neck hole with your neck stump. Yum, I guess. <laughs> you chuckled. Already your cheeks were beginning to flush. I need to let out some steam. But... I can't, like, do anything. You're trying to change, that's all that matters. Angel gave you a look. Fine, fine, let's do some crimes. Angel smiled. I wanna, but I won't. <sighs> I, I guess I just want some company. Angel looked at you and smiled. I already feel a little better. Happily, you swung your head left to right, almost losing balance and falling off. Eagerly, you watched him drink, hoping he'd give you another girl, but that didn't come. Come on, I'm getting thirsty. Angel snickered. Again, he reached behind the bar, take out another bottle and a straw, which he put into your mouth. There you go. Happily, you began suckling. You know, I wish I could help you, Angel. Help me? With your soul and all, I, I still have mine. Uh, I just... I, I have no clue how I could possibly give you advice or anything, and I feel bad. You blushed a little. Gave you a little black tint on your cheeks. Angel sighed again. As I said, I don't want advice, just give me some company. Come on. Quietly you sat next to each other as the both of you continued drinking random stuff from behind Husker's bar. I like the music, he said eventually. It was a good idea of you to show him now your tech, huh? But how did you even manage to get him to try it all? You snickered. Actually, I broke into his studio with the playlist and just put it on. That was brave of you. He doesn't own my soul, he can't shatter it. So no matter what he did, I would regenerate. Angel raised an eyebrow. Didn't see you as a masochist. Oh, I wouldn't say that. What I am saying is, we have all eternity to heal from wounds given to us. So why bother? The spider didn't even cross his arms. Your facial expression became smug. And you got it all figured out, ain't ya? I feel I got it figured out because I have been dead longer than I was alive. Being alive just seemed like the tutorial for being dead. Too bad that with my bad actions in life, I chose hard mode. Forever is a strange thing to grasp. Kate, I, I came here to call off. Not to have an existential crisis. A loud thud and the winds of pain took both of you by surprise. The fuck? In the meantime, you had tried getting your body over to the bar. And you had run into a wall. Angel Dust stared, laughing. Hey, stop that! Just help me up, okay? You rolled your body on its chest, but since you couldn't see where you were, you bumped into the sofa. Oh, stop laughing! Sudden, he grabbed you by the hair again. Ow! You're the only Dolan ever met who actually gets pain from having their hair pulled. You blushed. Well, it doesn't hurt, it's just you did it without warning, and I wanted you to know that I don't like it when somebody grabs my head without warning. He held you up to his face for a moment, and you smirked. What? He sighed, stepping over to your body. But as he was halfway there, he stopped in his tracks, grinning deviously. What are you thinking? You know Val doesn't have a dollar on the contract, right? 
Uh, I didn't, but why does that matter? You then blinked. Hang on. Why are you bringing this up now? Angel shrugged. What? Can I point stuff out? Looking at him with your eyes narrowed, you muttered. You're having lewd thoughts, don't you, Angel? He shrugged. Well, all I can say, Kate, I never screwed with one of your kind. I thought you were into guys. The spider demon laughed, almost dropping you, but instead he just took hold of your chin. His lips perked up into a grin. Being able to swing either way when necessary is the most important part about being a good actor in my genre. You just want a notch on your wood, don't ya? He shrugged. And you couldn't even brag with it considering how loose he could be. Your eyes shifted over to the sofa where your book was sitting. Just make this more entertaining than reading a book, okay? A dumb silence followed, during which he just quietly put your head back on your body. Sighing, you got up on your feet. And if I catch something, I tell Charlie. He snickered, but as he watched you run up the stairs, he realized the reality of it all. With a concerned tone, he shouted back, Wait, we're really doing this? Giggling, you entered your room on the second floor. You had been quietly crushing on the spider for a while anyways. He was just much different in the hotel than he was in public. You like guys who could receive and give. And no one did it better than Angel. Uh, you know, I don't usually do that with my close friends. He muttered as he entered finding you patiently waiting, sitting on your bed. Even Cherry? Even Cherry. I find that hard to believe, but you brought this up. He shrugged. I suppose I thought you'd say no. So you don't wanna? He went quiet about a minute. But then he smiled, his normal demeanor returning. Of course I want toots. He undid his shirt, releasing his chest poof. Jumping up, you stepped closer to him, and Angel looked at you with confusion as you buried your hands in his floof. Huh. He had a shit eating grin. I really thought. What? That I got actual tits? You nodded, and yet you kept going deeper into a spider fur until your fingers found his actual chest. You could feel his muscles move beneath your fingertips. He was soft, so unbelievably fluffy soft. As you were mesmerized by the fluff, he gently cupped your cheeks, making you look into his face. Let's do it slow, all right? He muttered before gently kissing your lips. Angel just didn't immediately push his tongue into your mouth. He waited for you to become needy and yearning for more. Feeling as your lips perked up into a smile, deepening the touch, his smell, his softness, his warmth. His tongue finally invading your mouth. It swirled and curled, practically wrapping around your own. It was like this man's body was made for breeding. He reached places no other man's tongue had ever reached. Your body shivered with delight as his second pair of hands took hold of your butt cheeks, squeezing tightly. Usually when you did it with a guy with four arms, they never used their second pair, but he was coordinated and trained. Your eyes rolled back into light for a moment, but then a devious idea came to you, and you pulled your face away, breathing heavily, and he gave you a questioning look, 
Uh, hang on. You were dizzy, needing a moment to calm down. Something you had never done before had come to you. And with someone like him, you could definitely try it. They would definitely be open for it. I have a few, um, things I'm hiding that we can use to spice it up. You gulped and took out a long, hard thing with straps. And his face turned into a white grin. Smiling, you said, With this, I can take you from behind. While you threw the toy on your bed before popping off your head, giving it to him. He looked at your blushing face as you smiled at him lewdly. Why you use me to your heart's content? His eyes lit up. Well, well, well. Beautiful display of creativity. Val would absolutely love you. You grinned. Shut up. Use me like a toy already. You're taking giving head a little too literal. God, I love you. Hey, thank you for watching my video until the very end. I'm very glad you enjoyed it so far, but before I say goodbye, I would like to shout out all of my lovely high tier channel members. Twilight, Zoe, Angel, Angry Boxman, Chasta Misery, Hella, Bitbit, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, Sleepy Town, Zachary, Nicodemus D, Ash Wisdom, Ikea, the Tribute, and AJ Anime Girl. Lastly, I'd like to thank all of my other channel members. You're all wonderful little mates. Thank you for watching. Bye.